Hello and welcome. My name is Jim Wooldridge and I'm a program manager on Microsoft's Hyper-V team. I'm excited to take you through the features and benefits of storage quality of service in Windows Server 2016. Delivering consistent workload performance is critical for public clouds, private clouds, and hosters. Our customers have repeatedly told us that managing storage I.O. bandwidth is their number one barrier to delivering consistent workload performance. Let's look at an example of the challenges in managing storage bandwidth. Imagine that we have a storage volume capable of delivering 1 million IOPS and SQL Server workloads using that storage volume. In the ideal world, both servers would use their fair share of the storage bandwidth evenly and, and consume all of the available bandwidth. We all know that this doesn't represent reality. In reality, workloads can starve other workloads of bandwidth, like SQL Server is doing here. This is an example of the noisy neighbor problem. In a Windows Server 2012, we enable limits on workloads to keep them from over-consuming bandwidth. In this case, we place a 400,000 and 600,000 IOP limit on our workloads. But what happens when a workload, like SQL Server 2, isn't using all of its assigned bandwidth? You, the customer, have unused storage bandwidth. In Windows Server 2016, we have enabled minimum IOP reservations. IOP reservations enable storage I.O. consistency and increased utilization of the storage system. If one workload, SQL Server 1, is experiencing peak demand and another workload, SQL Server 2, has a drop in demand, the high demand workload can utilize more storage bandwidth. With reservations, you get a guaranteed I.O. minimum and drive higher utilization of your storage system. Let's step through a short demo of using storage quality of service in Windows Server 2016. I have two virtual machines running in a Storage Spaces Direct hyperconverged cluster. Each virtual machine has a boot disk and a data disk. Each VM is running Iometer on its data disk. Let's take a look at these workloads. As you can see, workload 1 is running around 2,000 IOPS, and switching over to workload 2, it's running around 2,000 IOPS as well. The first feature we'll look at is the ability to monitor storage quas flows for all virtual disks across all VMs within the cluster. We monitor storage flows with the get storage quas flow PowerShell commandlet. As you can see, both of the workload data disks are getting around 2,000 IOPS, consistent with what we saw when we looked at the workloads themselves. Next, we'll use the new storage quas policy commandlet to create a policy name standard disk with a maximum IOPS limit of 1,000. Now we'll use the set VM hard disk drive commandlet to apply this policy to workload 1 and likewise to workload 2. If we jump over and check on our running workloads, we see that workload 1 is now only getting 1,000 IOPS and checking on workload 2, we see that it is getting 1,000 IOPS as well which we expect per the limit we just set within the policy. Now we've applied controls to manage the noisy neighbor problem and enabled a degree of storage I.O. consistency. However, in this scenario, we are leaving some storage bandwidth on the table. As we saw earlier, these workloads are capable of driving higher IOPS and the storage volume is capable of delivering more IOPS. So let's edit the policy and create a minimum IOP reservation and change the limit. We'll use the set storage quas policy to set the minimum IOPS to 1,000 and change the limit to 2,000 IOPS. Note that with this single policy edit operation, we are able to control all VM virtual disks assigned to this policy. In this demo, it's only two virtual disks, but in an enterprise deployment, it could be hundreds or thousands. This policy-based approach enables a one-to-many management model that simplifies managing storage quality of service at scale. The admin doesn't have to go out to each VM virtual disk in the cluster and modify storage I.O. settings. If we check back on our running workloads, we see that workload 1 is now running around 2,000 IOPS, but it does have a guarantee of 1,000. And we see that workload 2 is getting around 2,000 IOPS as well. So we've ensured a base level of storage I.O. consistency via a minimum reservation and allowed these workloads to burst up to 2,000 IOPS. 
So we've managed the noisy neighbors without leaving storage bandwidth on the table. And we managed all of this with easy to use policies. To learn more, please visit AKAMS Storage QoS. Thank you.